This week on the Digital Coffee, Google takes on Facebook with a new type of ad. Is virtual reality the future of our online meetings? And Facebook shares some accessibility tips for using Facebook and Instagram. All of that and more after this. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Digital Coffee. This is your weekly dose of digital marketing and social media news for small business. My name is Amanda Webb. Google is taking on Facebook with a new style of ad. Now, traditionally, Google ads have been based on search intent, which means you type something into Google and it will serve you ads at the top of the page, related to what you've typed in, trying to help you, but also giving businesses the opportunity to push that up the feed by putting it in an ad. They have, and they do do retargeting ads, a bit like Facebook. So if you've visited a website, you'll see display ads appear elsewhere for that website that you've appeared on. I mean, they were doing that way before Facebook. But this new type of ad is going to appear in what they call the discover feed. Now, when I heard about this, I was like, what is the Discover feed? Anyone know what the Discover feed is? The Discover feed is available on the Google app and actually any mobile experience, they say, but I think I have mine all set up not to show me that. It's also now available on YouTube and it's it's integrated in some way into Gmail as well. And that gives you a, a potential audience of, get this, I might not be looking, but I'm in the minority because 2.9 billion people see the Discover feed. So these new ads will appear in the Discover feed and instead of being based on that search intent, they're based on interests, just like Facebook ads. It's taken them a long time to get here, hasn't it? They must have seen a massive dent in their income over the last 10 years of Facebook advertising. And they had to, of course, find out more about their users. But now these Discover ads are here. It's going to be really interesting to see what we see, if we see them, and how we see them. So on the left, we've got the, I think that's the YouTube Discover feed. And you can see there's a carousel ad. The middle is your standard Google homepage feed. And there's an ad there. And on the right hand side is what it will look like in Gmail. Facebook Workplace is their tool for businesses. So a business can sign up to Workplace. It's a paid tool. Employees can um, socialize in this space. Um, it's a work tool so they can collaborate. It's, it's kind of a bit like, I don't know, a bit like Slack, but better. They've launched some exciting updates this week. I'm imagining as more and more businesses decide not to bring people back, to keep people working remotely, that they're going to need more robust tools to communicate with coworkers or for, to let coworkers communicate with the, each other. And there's loads of tools out there, but it looks like Facebook have kind of taken the ball by the horns and decided to launch some new features will actually make the online experience a lot more like working in an office. So Mark Zuckerberg actually launched this this week. He did an announcement via live video to his co-workers in Facebook, because of course they use Facebook Workplace, and then they took that and repurposed it in a blog post. So some of the things that they're adding to Workplace are, firstly, rooms, rooms. And we've seen rooms being rolled out on Facebook, haven't we, over the last few weeks? So they come into events and they've come into groups. And actually I did my first room meetup rather than a Zoom meetup this week. And I have to say it was quite good. It's kind of seamless experience. I didn't have to go and set up a separate Zoom link and let people in. It was kind of cool. So now they've released this for Workplace, which makes sense because if you were using Workplace, you still had to go off somewhere else to have your virtual meeting. Now you can do it directly within Workplace. Alongside that, they've enabled Portal for Workspace. So if you haven't come across Portal, Portal is like a separate device. It's a bit like an Alexa, it has a screen on it. It's a video calling device that integrates with Messenger and WhatsApp. What's nice about this is if you are co-working from home, you can have this set up for your meetings. It's not on your laptop. 
So you can have that set up. You can be talking to people. You don't have to fiddle around with your laptop at the last minute and lift it up on a whole load of books so that you're at eye level. You can have it ready. And it also means you'll be able to take notes and work away on your laptop as well as having portal running rather than having to try and skip between different windows. So that will be good. I'm actually getting excited about Workplace. I wish I had co-workers. <laughs> They're um, launching Live Studio, which makes it very easy for you to go live from your desktop, gives you a few additional features, and you can use tools like Ecamm Live that I'm using now to actually stream via that. So that will be really good for things like the announcement that Mark Zuckerberg did to his team, for the CEO and team leaders to communicate with people and maybe do some training sessions. That will be fabulous. Most excitingly, virtual reality rooms. So users of Workplace will be able to set up virtual reality rooms and have closer to a real life meeting with their co-workers. And at the moment, it's kind of weird when you set up a room using Oculus because I'm doing that with my other half, nobody else, because you have your avatar, you can have your avatar looking however you want. And it does take a little while for you to get used to that's a human, but it is a really interesting way to go. And I can see technology is only going to evolve further into that human becoming more like the human that you're talking to and you becoming more comfortable talking to that person. And like when I'm watching Netflix on my Oculus, that kind of virtual space will become in our heads more of a real space. So that could be an exciting way for you to feel more like you're around people rather than you having to do things like Zoom calls. I think this is really interesting that Facebook are doing this. They are saying themselves that they're not going to bring everyone back. They're going to allow more people to work remotely. So if you're working remotely right now, it could be great for you. Do you remember when Facebook launched the Creator app and there was one massive problem with it. You couldn't actually create posts within the creator app. You could look at your analytics, you could read your messages, but you couldn't create posts. How annoying <laughs> was that? So this week, Facebook are allowing Creator Studio, or they're rolling out Creator Studio to people so that you can actually create posts within it, which of course makes sense. I can't believe they launched the product without that. I still don't have it. They haven't rolled it out to me yet, but it does make sense. And I think at last, they're thinking about social media managers or business owners that aren't at a laptop all the time. They need to make the tools for us posting on social media more robust, more easier for us to use from mobile. And I think that's where Creator Studio is going. I think that's what they have planned for it. I would love if they just rolled out a full functioning tool rather than half a tool. But this could be absolutely fantastic if you are a social media manager or even for managing your own content on Facebook. The mobile experience is better. Before we get there though, it's missing some stuff still. We do have, or we will have really soon, the ability to post from Creator Studio, but now, and look at your analytics, and look at your direct messages and manage comments. All of that is available, but I'd love to see the ads app, which is separate currently to Creator Studio to be moved into it as well. And when that happens, why have we got two apps? Why have we got Pages Manager and Creator Studio? I think Facebook need to neaten this up a little bit. But it is good news now that you can post and you can schedule and you can do everything from mobile again. Facebook are reintroducing messenger polls. So this is something they got rid of when they went to Messenger Lite, when they got rid of a lot of the features from Messenger, they found it was too clunky and too slow. They got rid of stuff. And now they've reintroduced polls. So you know when you're in a Facebook group chat on Messenger, you can, it's often so busy that if you ask a question, even with that nice threaded thing that you can get, your whole thing gets lost. Your whole stream gets lost. You can't really remember how many people liked it or didn't like it. This is where polls will come in really handy. So as well as asking longer questions within those messenger groups, you'll be able to create a poll to gauge people's opinion in one place. So you'll be able to analyze the results straight away. When I say will, this is live now. You can do it now in a messenger chat group of three people and more. Because obviously if there's just one person in the chat, you can just ask them, 
you can just ask them. I think this is brilliant. I'm so glad they've reintroduced this. It could be really handy for things like getting customer feedback. You know, not everyone wants to have that conversation in, in an open space. Messenger gives you a more private conversation way of doing that. It could be good to get feedback on products. It could be great to get feedback on services. If you have a mastermind group or a group of business people that you trust and you want to run some ideas by, it could be fabulous for that. So I'm really happy that Facebook have brought this tool back. Facebook has shared some accessibility tips. If, you are, if your content isn't accessible, you are missing out on a large portion of your audience or potential customers just because they have a disability. And traditionally we think of this as that they don't hear well or they don't see well, but also this can go for things like dyslexia. Most of the tips that Facebook has shared this week are to do with um, people who are hard of hearing or people who don't see well because it relates to things like screen readers. But I think these are really basic but important tips. If you haven't dipped your toe in the accessibility waters now, hopefully you are seeing captions appearing when I'm talking, depending when you watch this video. And that is accessibility. That's their first accessibility tip, is to add captions to your videos. So of course that people can't hear can actually read your captions and understand what you're saying. Second tip they had, and this is one that I learned recently, and it I would say it blew my mind, but I hadn't thought of this before. And this is with hashtags. When you're constructing a hashtag that's more than one word, you should capitalize the first letter of each word, because that way a screen reader is able to see that they're separate words and able to read it out. Also, you shouldn't have it all in capital letters because what a screen reader does then is it reads out the individual letters. When they're all capitals, it thinks it's initials for something. Interesting. Other tips included when you're using emojis, use the proper emoji kind of icony things, images, because if you're creating like those funky emojis that you can create with like bits of characters on your keyboard, that is absolutely impossible for a screen reader to read. It doesn't understand what's going on at all. Whereas it understands when you put in an emoji because it's a specific thing, what you're trying to say. Use alt text, so alternative text, which you could use on Instagram. You can actually build it in when you put in a an image and you're about to share it, you have the option to add alt text. Also, if you've got a website, if you blog, you'll know there's particularly on WordPress, it prompts you to add alt text there. And what that is, is when somebody can't see the image, the screen reader will read that out to them. So be very descriptive about what's in the image. My last blog image could be described as girl, my girl, woman, looking a bit grumpy on a background, orange background with the words overlaid in text. Get that specific because then somebody is able to absolutely see what, what is happening there. I know some countries are introducing some um, rules around accessibility of websites. So it's important we start to get grips on these things. So well done Facebook for sharing those with us. Instagram rooms are here. It seems like it was only two weeks ago, wasn't it? When Facebook launched rooms and I was like three weeks ago, maybe. And I was like, this would be great if they brought them into groups. And then they brought them into groups. Well, now they brought them into Instagram. Here we go. So when you go into Instagram now, if you go into your direct messages, you click on the camera icon, it gives you the opportunity to set up a room. You click on that, you select the people you want to add to your room and you can have a group video chat. It even gives you a link. Not sure where you're gonna share that link, but it gives you a link to your room so you can invite people over. What I'd really love to see with this would be an Instagram sticker that matches it. So when you set up a room or when you're going to set up a room, you can put your sticker on your story to invite people into it. And I love this because I think the more that we can have these conversations with our customers and our followers, the more we find out about them, the more we find out about their needs, the more that we can match what they need with our products. So I would love to see, I love doing my weekly um, Zoom calls on my Facebook group. I'm getting to know so much more about the people in my group and hopefully they're getting to know a little bit more about me. I feel like I have a strong personal connection. So if your audience is more Instagram 
and less Facebook, I think rooms could be exciting. Facebook have launched two new standalone apps this week. The first one is called Catch Up and Catch Up is like rooms for voice calls. So this is what it will look like. You'll be able to, every anyone that has catch up, you'll be able to see are they active at the moment. You'll be able to do one-to-one -one voice calls or group voice calls. I'm wondering about this. Do young people use the phone now? Is this a new thing? Is this a thing? Because it used to be when I were a kid, we used to use the phones. I was watching Nightmare on Elm Street during the week and everyone was using their phones, uh, like not mobile, mobile phones because they weren't a thing like phones in their bedroom like physical phones is the phone a thing with kids now is this why they've launched this app to be honest i won't be using it i hate voice calls but <laughs> i have to do them but i hate them but it is interesting to see that they've launched this this is out now you can go and download catch up from the app store the second tool is called collab and this isn't out yet this is in beta, so you can actually, I will put the link below, you can apply to be a beta tester. And this enables musicians to, as you can see, create music together while they're distant. It looks like, or it sounds like it's only a 15 second clip. So you would record your 15 second clip. Whoever you're playing with can watch it back and play their little bit across, uh, along and someone else can do it and someone else can do it. or you could just do it all yourself. It could be you playing all the different parts and it will make a kind of, you know, a bit like that one that the Rolling Stones did during that thing, the Lady Gaga concert back in the day. That's what it's going to look like. I do like the idea of this. It addresses the problem that we have, like musicians can't play together on Zoom. All the parts do need to be recorded separately and that this makes it a more seamless experience. But I feel there are apps out there that do this already. It will be interesting to see how it involves, how it evolves, not involves. Tell me, do you use direct messaging on Twitter? And do you use it as much as you might use it on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram? Because I know that I don't. I don't use Twitter direct messaging. I usually see a direct message and get annoyed because I have to go somewhere to look at it. So this is a problem. I don't think it's just me. I think it's a lot of people. This is a problem a lot of people seem to be facing because Twitter are testing something to address it. Well, at least on desktop. So this is from Matt Navarro on Twitter. He spotted it or somebody spotted it and shared it with him. This is a pop-up window that will pop up when you are direct messaging something, somebody on the web, on desktop only. It's just like, isn't it? It's just like the Facebook one or the LinkedIn one that pops up. And I do think that if I got access to this tool, I may be tempted to have more and longer chat conversations on Twitter. So I think this can be cool.